Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brit Workshop. We're doing sharpening today, and the reason I'm doing this is that I've recently purchased some Veritas planes and chisels, and they are so beautiful. It's made me think very carefully about how I'm going to look after them, and sharpening is the key. Now, when I first started woodworking, I bought myself this oil stone, and I got on with it reasonably well. I thought I was quite good at sharpening tools until I saw the results that my brother was producing and he was using wet and dry paper and using a lapping technique. I had a go at it uh, but I must confess I wasn't very good at it and I didn't like the water in the workshop. I never have liked water in the workshop particularly. So I went on to a diamond stone like this one and rather than using water on it I use very fine oil. What I should have done at that point was to go back uh, to the wet and dry and try using the fine oil on the wet and dry. But I never did try it and I still haven't. After a while, I got myself one of these. It's a water stone. It uh, is pretty efficient. Uh, it makes a pretty good job. But the only problem is uh, afterwards you've got to clear up. You've got a lot of water in the workshop again. And in the end, I started to sort of delay sharpening tools. And I was reminded of all of this uh, when I read an article in the British magazine The Woodworker by a chap called Michael Forster. And I've contacted him and his article is really interesting because he says that sharpening tools should be something that's quick and easy to do. You should do it often and it shouldn't be a chore. And I suddenly thought, right, this has got to go and I've got to go back to the lapping technique because that's what Michael Forster was saying. So today I'm going to give you an introduction to using lapping techniques to sharpen your tools. Now before I talk you through the equipment, let me just say you will not see me sharpening my new Veritas planes which I bought from Lee Valley. And the reason for that is quite simple. The blades for these are PM V11 steel and they are delivered in these beautiful carrying cases and they are absolutely razor sharp on delivery. So there's no way I'm going to touch those blades until I really need to. So I'm going to be using these two old planes of mine as the guinea pigs in the demonstrations you're going to see. Now lapping is a process of taking a plain iron or blade like this and then making sure that it's rubbed consistently against an abrasive so that the edge is improved and made very sharp. Now, in order to do the lapping process, these are the bits of kit that you need. First, you need a very flat surface. I have a piece of float glass, which I've mounted in this frame to protect it. You can buy pieces of float glass ready-made for the job from good DIY stores. Next, you need some abrasive. And I've got four abrasives stuck onto this piece of float glass, and I bought these from Lee Valley. I'm going to be showing you abrasives that I've got from Axminster Power Tools and also I've managed to get some samples direct from 3M. Next, you need lubricant and you cannot use these abrasives without a little bit of lubricant of some description. You can use ordinary water, but as I said earlier, oil makes things so much better and so much cleaner in the workshop. And then the key component that I think is absolutely essential, in fact I would doubt whether it's possible to do it without, is to have some form of honing guide. Now this is my old honing guide that I used to use uh, with my oil stone and with my diamond stone. And to be honest, uh, it is cheap and cheerful but the results were never spectacular. The plain iron would go in here, you'd tighten it up so it held it, and then away you went. And this little roller uh, was there to help guide the process. But it just wasn't good enough. And so at the recent DNM show, I went to the Brymark stand, and they always have good deals at these shows, and I've got the Veritas honing guide. It's not cheap, uh, but it is absolutely beautiful. And if you go to a show and get something like this, you can usually get a bargain. And there were some bargains to be had at the show. And thrown in uh, with mine, I've got the camber roller. I'm not going to describe this. You can look up in detail on the internet if you need. 
Now when you buy the Mark II honing guide, uh, you get two components in the box. You get the guide itself, and you also get this registration jig. I'll talk about that in a minute. Now the guide itself has these features. There is a clamping plate under here, controlled with these two tightening knobs here, which is used to clamp the plain blade in place. There's a coarse angle control here which has three positions and it's adjusted with this knurled knob here. It has position one, two and three and they are colour coded red, yellow and green. Underneath here you have a roller and that, that roller ensures the smooth movement of the honing guide across the surface of your abrasive. And on the end of the roller there is a control. It's normally in the up position, you can see that indent there pointing upwards at 12 o'clock, and you can rotate this to make a very fine adjustment to the angle uh, that the guide is presenting the blade to the abrasive at. And we'll talk more about this later. Now the registration jig slides onto the honing guide like so. There's a dovetail uh, mechanism for attaching the two together and you hold it in place by tightening this knob here. There's a scale on the honing guide and there's an indent on the registration jig so that you can line the two up according to the width of the item you're about to sharpen. If you're doing a one inch chisel, you'd set this on one. I'm gonna be do doing a two inch uh, planar blade and so I'm gonna set this on two and then tighten that up. Not too tight, but just tight enough. The position of this doesn't have to be super critical, but it just helps you to get the blade central to the jig. Now, on the registration jig, uh, there is a control here, and it's adjusted by loosening the knurled screw and then moving this around. And there are some indents, you can see these little indents, uh, for fixed positions or normal positions that this should be set in. And you remember the colour coding we had on the course guide, which was red, yellow and green? Well, there are red, yellow and green marks here, which help you uh, to get the correct angle set up for the honing guide. I've got this set on 2, which is yellow, and I want a 25 degree angle, so I'm looking for 25 degrees in the yellow, and that's where this is set now, so I'm just going to tighten that up. And what that is doing is setting the position of this end stop. If I were to position my planar blade in here now, do this carefully, you can see that this end stop dictates how far away from this centre line the blade is positioned. And it's that which dictates the angle which the blade will be presented to the abrasive. You need to get the blade nicely snug against this side of the registration jig. And once those two are in place, up against there and up against there, you can then carefully and evenly tighten up uh, the two uh, screws to hold the blade firmly in position. Once that's done, turn it back over. Being careful now, because you've got a sharp blade in the honing guide, undo the clamping knob for the registration jig and remove it. And we don't need that anymore for this uh, sharpening session. We're now ready to start sharpening. But before we do so, just check that these two clamping knobs are tight and check that this micro angle adjuster here is in the 12 o'clock position. Now if your planar blade has seen better days as this one has done, you might wish to start uh, on perhaps an oil stone. Now if you do feel that you need to start on something fairly coarse, I would recommend that you take a permanent felt tip pen like this and mark the whole of the bevel with the felt tip pen because that then allows you to see your progress. I'm now going to put a bit of oil on my oil stone and I'm not using such a fine oil as I would use on the uh, other abrasives here, just an ordinary oil there, and away you go. 
And the beauty of this is that once your blade is set in the honing guide, you don't need to alter it again. You can use whatever abrasive you want, in this case carborundum stone, and away you go. Now if you're using carborundum stone quite a lot, every now and again, rotate it. And that way you're going to get consistent and even wear. Now don't worry if you've got a planar blade which is too wide for your stone because you can use an action like this. The wide roller on the Veritas honing guide really does lend itself to doing wide blades on relatively narrow stones. And when you're satisfied, turn it over and you can look at progress and you may be able to see some of the red is left here and that is because this plain iron had previously been sharpened on a circular water stone and therefore was slightly concave and so you've still got a bit of redness left there but I've managed to get enough bevel uh, to satisfy my needs for now. Now in the second video I'm going to show you how we we'll go about doing the lapping using the lapping sheets I've already got mounted on my float glass and using some other lapping material which I've received from elsewhere.